Hello, I'm Brent Ferris, the creator of Kaiju Engine. And Kaiju is a open source game engine that I developed so that I can create games the way that I want to create them. Um, it's not my first game engine, but it's my most recent and the one that I've actually developed an editor for that I'm continually developing. So this is a devlog. It's the first devlog that I put together and I'm using this slideshow format because I, well, to be honest, I rather spend my time coding. I like programming. I like programming game engines. I like programming games and I don't really want to spend a whole lot of time editing and slideshows are kind of a nice in between. I collect the various things that I want to show and um, can present them pretty easily. So in this update, I'm going to be talking about media queries and media queries are seen in web browsers whenever you change the resolution of the screen these are called this is called like responsive ui or fluid ui it's um pretty useful for phones especially whenever you can rotate the screen to a different um, aspect ratio so you can go from vertical to horizontal and your ui will need to be laid out pretty drastically different between those two now, I know this slide is called Unity Problem, but it's not really a problem with Unity. It's just a problem my friend had in a Unity project that he's putting together. So he's developed his game for phone in the vertical layout, so it looks beautiful, perfect whenever it's vertical. However, when he turns his phone sideways to horizontal layout, the UI is larger than the screen. You can't really see anything. Things go off of the screen. And then if you were to open up your phone, say it's a foldable, uh, you can see the old UI, but it's overlapping each other, and it it's just doesn't look very good in that layout either. So obviously this isn't his fault, and it's not Unity's fault. It's just more time needs to be spent to figure out these resolutions. However, that was the reason for me to go add media queries to the game engine to make it a lot easier to develop UIs with these different screen sizes in mind, the fact that the screen size can change. And this is true inside of just your desktop. Whenever you change a window size, um, it should be responsive as well to that. So inside of the engine, I've developed my own UI system. I wrote it in C and I ported it over to the game engine. And then I have it so that you can write your, your UI code directly in Go. I ported the code from C to Go. So you can write your UI code directly in Go in the, in the raw code for the engine if you would like to. However, the, uh, the way that I have it laid out for ease of use is through HTML and CSS. I've written my own custom HTML, CSS um, implementation. I use the parsers that are built into Go, and I use a third party for the CSS parser for now, which I'll probably replace in the future with my own. And taking these and then hooking them into the existing UI system. And I can explain the UI system later on in maybe a different presentation, but this is the general concept of it for right now. So we have here on the left, we have the HTML. You can see it uses the standard template templating that you have inside of Go. And on the right is some of the CSS code. And it should look pretty much similar to what you would expect out of uh, either of these. Now I want to show you an example inside of the engine itself where it, we could use this, uh, this media query to improve the UI. So here on the main screen, this is the project selection or project creation screen. If you were to reduce the window size, you'll notice that the open project button wraps to the next line and is hugging the left side and it looks fairly ugly. So what we'd want to do is take that button and center it and make it look more pretty. I know that it doesn't really make sense to have the editor UI so tiny on the screen, but if I wanted the UI to be, uh, say, on a tablet or something like that, maybe there's there's a reason for this. But I'm going to use this just as a contrived example to uh, prove the point because it's easy and straightforward. So we'll take a look at the current code. The current code has this button here. Uh, that is that button we want to offset, the one that's th that doesn't look very good when it wraps. So we'll start by creating a span container around that button, which you can see here. 
And then we're going to add a class to that span, just as you would normally do in HTML and CSS. Next, we're going to write some of the CSS code to lay out this new setup. We'll start with the CSS code that happens by default whenever you're not in the media query. In this case, I'm going to set a margin left to 0.5 EM. And then we're going to create the media tag itself for the media property. What are these called? Selectors. Um, and then we can add in our class in here, set its width to 100%. That way it fits within its own line. And then turn off that margin because we don't need it anymore. It's going to take over the whole line. Next, we're going to select the button within our span element. And we're going to center it, essentially. So with all that, we're going to take a look at what it looks like now. Now when we reduce the size, you'll notice that the open project button is correctly centered on its own line and generally looks a lot better than it did before whenever the window is smaller. So that's the addition that I did to Kaiju yesterday. And hopefully as I do some more larger additions, I can do some more devlogs like these. I can also do devlogs on features that I added in the past so that people can learn how to use the engine in general. And uh, there's a lot of features in it, so kind of going over all of those. You can check out my X account. I post on there quite often the updates that I do to the engine. You can check out the GitHub repository. Feel free to start it, clone it. Check out the issues, the closed issues, is where you can see all the stuff that's gone in recently. Or you can just check the commit history, I guess. Um, or submit your own issues or ideas or features. Then we have a Discord if that's your type of forum where you like to chat live and kind of see what other people think about the engine itself. And then we have a mailing list. And that mailing list, I send out an email maybe once a month that has a pretty detailed update of all the stuff that has gone in. So that's about it. Thanks for watching. And um, yeah, let me know if you which thoughts you have if you like these kind of devlogs, even if they're short. Uh, maybe the other ones will be longer. I don't know. But this is a more presentable way than I've been doing in the past, which is just me kind of hitting record and then clicking through stuff and, and fumbling around. That's that's my typical style. And this is not really much different. It's just me preparing some visuals ahead of time. So cool. Yeah. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.